Hey y'all, welcome back to my garden. Just sharing a few little updates, including the small harvest for dinner tonight. One thing I do want to share with you guys was in my previous um, video about surviving the freeze, I showed you like the sweet potato vines that were here in the front yard. Well, I've come out and pulled all of those up. And people are always amazed when I tell them that those vines are actually growing potatoes underground. And so when I pulled them up, I just left this one sitting here. And I decided to come out here and show you today. That's an actual, that is an actual sweet potato. Um, it's kind of degraded because that was last week and it's just been sitting out here on top of the ground. But it's actually edible. And when I started pulling these up, this is what they look like. They're completely dead, all brown. But... I'm pulling these up this week because last week I was way too tired to do this bed. It was very intimidating. But as I was doing this, another potato, a big one. Those are actually, like I said, they're actually in both. Let's see if I can get in there and show them. There we go. That's a sweet potato. And that. If I wanted to, I could go through these beds and like dig through and get all the potatoes out, but I don't care to do that. They'll just regrow next year and those vines will come back nice and pretty. I really do love the look of the potato vines um, when they grow in and they do really well over on that side. I don't have too many issues, but on this side, things like this happens. So that is just grass. Excuse my shadow. That is just grass. All of that is grass. From, you can see the little green, that's the holes, and it goes along the edge of the bed. But this right here, from like right there, all the way over, that's grass that was covered by the vine. And so now, hubby has to come out here and just kind of like weed that little bit of the grass. So, I'm now rethinking having the potato vines over here with this big Christmas tree. And maybe I'll do like some nasturtiums as ground cover instead. We shall see. We'll see what, what to do with that. Anyway, moving on to um, two other things I wanted to share with y'all today. All right, back in the backyard where, you know, most of the action is in terms of the garden. Um, <laughs> I've been so lazy. I still haven't come out here and cut down this tomato plant like I'll do that today but anyway also in the last video just like I was talking about up front um I also said in the last video that I would come out here and talk about why I planted alliums in as many places as I possibly could alliums I mean onions and garlic and scallions things of that nature so these are onions um kind of frozen Oh, these are red onions. Look how pretty they look. But anyway, those are growing really, really well. There's red, red, white, and yellow in that order. Red, white, and yellow. Um, more onions. Again, red, white, and yellow. These are having a little bit more of a problem, I think, because I didn't weed very well over here. But that's not the point of today. I'll come out here and do that another time. But I did want to talk about, like, why I'm just surveying things right now as we walk to the other side of the garden. Cabbages are looking good. Broccoli, something's happening. They're all starting to flower. I don't know what to do about that. Um, and then something's happening on that's bug damage and then some of them I don't know what's going on there I'll have to do my research on that today but these leaves are absolutely delicious like I cook them with kale and with look at this that looks really really bad um I cook them with kale and with you can see here where I took a whole head that was so delicious Cook those with kale and collards and sometimes mix in some Swiss chard, which also suffered in the freeze. But I got to, you know, come out here and figure out what's going on with some of these leaves. Um, back to the alliums. So this is all garlic over here. This garlic, 
And where you see empty spaces, I actually planted more garlic so they're not truly empty. And then I planted some more around my um, collards. Let's see, you can see. There they are coming up already. There's one. I planted a whole bunch of them. Like, we use garlic a ton, pretty much in everything except sweets. So, planted a bunch of them over here by the collards. There is an artichoke plant somewhere around where that rock is. And those need cold to come up. So, hopefully, those will actually come up um, in another one somewhere around the area of this rock. Perhaps that little tiny thing right there is it. I don't know. We have to give it a couple of weeks and see. But also planted some garlic over here. There you can see my Swiss chard. Cut it all the way back because it froze and the leaves were like inedible. You couldn't do anything with that. So more garlic. They're all along here. If you see all along. And then, oh, I might have messed up a few of them when I put this brick over here to hold things up. So anyway, garlic over there. There's garlic on this side. And the reason I did this is because there's a lot of pests that don't like garlic. And so if I plant it close to um, close to veggies that are plagued by a ton of pests, then I'm hoping that we'll be able to deter those pests. I'm learning a lot about companion planting. I'm learning as I go. Um, I don't typically do flowers or anything like that, but I'm starting to plant more flowers because many of them are very, very beneficial for this purpose. Um, plus for the bees. Um, so when you look through, when you look in my garden and you see a ton of garlic, number one, I actually use a ton of garlic and a ton of onions every day when I cook. But also for that purpose, to kind of deter those bugs. So I have them planted all over the place out here, as you just saw. And I have some planted in the very front bed um, over by the asparagus. Those are scallions up there. And I've been trying to keep them separated. So over here is all garlic in these two beds. And then um, the ones that are all the way on the other end, those are all onions. So... That's how I keep them straight, like what's what. Plus, you can kind of tell by the foliage, the onions, as I, sh as I showed you earlier, have much more um, thick blades and versus the blades of the garlic. And the onions have cylindrical blades. This garlic is just a flat, it's very flat. So that's why I plant a lot of onions. I did say I would talk about that a little bit. Now, what I really, really wanted to talk to y'all about today all right you guys so this is what i really wanted to share with you um i would say forgive the lighting but this is all by design like it's a little bit dark in here this is our morning room slash kids media room and we just recently changed it which that's why you see like picture frames and things on the floor there's a lot going on in here right now but what I'm talking about today in terms of the garden is that I have moved my seed starting setup. So that's why the lighting looks the way it looks. I'm sitting here next to a window. There's a window right here and it gets amazing light in the morning, like amazing light. But that light is not enough to start seeds. Now, if you have been following me for a while, either here on YouTube or when I first started gardening, I only did it over on Instagram. Uh, I only shared things over on Instagram and on my blog. So if you've been with me from the beginning, you know that I never, ever used to start seeds because I was not used to seeing other people start seeds. Like my grandparents didn't do it. My great grandparents didn't do it. So I wasn't used to it. Then I realized you know, I'm spending a lot of money on starts, and sometimes those starts are not necessarily super healthy. And then if I buy a start that looks really good, really super healthy, and I spend a ton of money on it, and it comes home and I bring it home and it doesn't work out, I'm really angry because now I spent. When I say a ton of money, if you buy a tomato start, let's just say you buy a tomato start, you buy a baby, a little bitty baby, and it might be a dollar, two dollars. 
you know, if you buy one, it's no big deal. But you're trying to grow food for your family and you get 10 tomato plants. And then you buy two eggplants, two eggplant starts. And then you buy some cabbage and you buy some broccoli, some cauliflower. You are buying all the starts. Well, so I'm, I'm mixing winter vegetables and summer vegetables. Let's stick with summer. You buy some tomatoes, some cucumbers, um, some okra, and you buy all these starts. By the time you're done, you've spent a ton of money on starts. You buy seeds and you buy those things one time and then you grow them and you save your seeds. It took me a minute to get there. It took me a minute to realize that. And I started trying to start seeds indoors two years ago. Two years ago, it did not work out so well, but I did not intensively sow my seeds and I didn't have a grow light, which at first when I got this grow light here, which I'll show you in a minute, I did not think it did anything. I was just like, well, I just wasted my money on a grow light. But it actually does. Um, lesson learned. And then, so now, even if I buy a start, if that start does well, that's the last start I'm ever going to buy because I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it go to flower so that I can collect the seeds. And then I have plants to grow for the next season and the next season and plants to share with other people for the next season and the next season and the next season. And that's what's been going on. So basically, I moved my seed starting set up from my office across the way to here in, again, <laughs> we call it the morning room, the kids' media room, like, <laughs> and the light is great. Let me just show you the setup I have right now. So just full transparency before we get there, what you're looking at, over on that side is my office, which is where I used to have my seed starting um, station, I guess you would call it, set up. Now I brought it in here and this is what we have going on. So these back here, these back here are actually like, they don't need to be in here. And I brought them in because it was freezing outside and they were just limp and falling over. So I'm trying to bring those back to life. Um, part of my point in coming in here is again, in the morning, there's tons of light from this window, tons of light. This window is Southeast facing. So we get a lot of light in here and then I have this grow light. Um, certain plants, I really need help from this grow light. They say to get a heating pad for some plants, but other plants don't want anything. For instance, I have broccoli and cauliflower in this one right here. And those are plants that like the cold weather. So a heating pad underneath would not help those. But then over there, there's onions and um, the celery and lettuce here. That Those are cool weather as well. They don't want to be hot, but they still need the light. So essentially what I've done here, and this is the whole point of me talking about this, is I have used the most effective least expensive method of growing. A lot of times people think, oh, it takes so much, so many resources to grow your own food. And sometimes it does. Like if you were buying starts, like I was saying, yeah, it's going to be really expensive. And if you don't have your own, if you don't, if you don't decide to eventually compost, yeah, it's going to be super expensive to buy the compost. But the only thing I bought here are these little cell trays. I bought these um, off Amazon and they came with like a million of these little trays, but they only came with three of these where you can put water. Let me see if I can show you. You can put water in this bottom reservoir. Then you sit the little trays inside of there. They came with these little markers and it has like a little dome top and you can adjust the humidity like such. So that's the only thing that I bought. And I bought those two years ago when I first started doing this. Have not replenished them. Have not done anything else different. The reason I'm saying this is because you don't need this, this whole setup right here. You don't need all this stuff. You don't need it. This right here, I, I, I do feel like you need the cells. You need the cell pods. These cell pods are like really, really... Um, they're helpful, but you probably probably could get those. You probably could get these 
for next to nothing from the dollar store, or you could get like some little um, standard black pots like this, but smaller. Standard black pots like this, but smaller. And you can use those as your cell pods. So this right here is just like those shoebox boxes. Go to the dollar store, get one for a dollar, and pop your cell pods in there, water them from the bottom, and it's the same exact concept as this right here, except this only costs a dollar. I think these things for all the sales and everything was maybe like $15, $20. Do this and you see three fit in there. Easy breezy, $1. Then the other thing that I did, um, which I hope you can kind of see this. The other thing that I did was these markers, these plastic markers right here are really nice. Like I love them. They're cute. You know, you can erase them and some of them are in pencil, some are in marker that I did, but you know, you can erase them or whatever. But guess what else works just as well? Popsicle sticks. This is a popsicle stick. It's broken in half. Let's see. Broken in half and then labeled what I needed to on there. You probably can't see it because the lighting is kind of off. But that's it. These are like a dollar from the dollar store for like a hundred of them. So you can imagine you have markers for all of your seedlings for one dollar. And that's going to, you know, you can use those over and over. Not over and over, but a hundred of them broken in half. That's 200. So every year you have some markers for your seedlings. Now, this would not work outside because once it gets wet, you're not going to be able to see it. What I did learn was that to, was to not use ink and use pencil instead because once the water hits the ink, it's going to run. When the water hits the pencil, it doesn't really do much. This is the other thing that I want to show y'all. Last thing, last thing. Watering. So when you're planting seeds, it's really great to be able to just take a spray bottle like this and just spray the top of your plants, right? Not your plants, but the soil where the seed is. But, and these spray bottles can be had really, really cheaply, a dollar again at the dollar store. I think I got a two pack for like $3 at Family Dollar. So, you know, that's one option, one way to do it. The other way to do it is if you have water bottles, which we don't always buy, we don't typically buy water in water bottles, but we had some from an event we were having. So we had this, you know, some water bottles left over. Took this, punched some holes in the top, and I used that to just water the top without dislodging my seeds because that's the big thing. You don't want to dislodge your seeds. So that costs nothing because I was going to have that anyway. Easy breezy. So I just turned the light on and you can see it made no difference in the quality of this video because that grow light is so bright that you can't see a difference between that and you know the overhead lighting. But the last thing I wanna share with you, this right here, this right here, and let me talk to you about it. This is a potato. This is a red potato. I bought this from the store. I do have a potato vine out front. We talked about that earlier. We talked about that in the last video, but we never have used that, those potatoes to actually eat. This, we bought these potatoes. I always buy red potatoes. This is what I love to make my smashed potatoes, quote unquote, mashed potatoes, um, roasted potatoes. These are my favorites. Um, so when they go, when they get these little eyes on them, on the eyes, when they get those on them, most people just throw them out. This right here, I'm going to plant and it's going to grow more potatoes. So there's no waste in the kitchen. There's no waste, you know, in the garden. When I plant this, it's going to grow me a whole other batch of potatoes. And I have a ton of them in the, not a ton. I think I have like six or seven of them in the kitchen. And then we bought some russet potatoes because we wanted some true baked potatoes. 
which we never ever do. But I'm saying that to say that those potatoes, most likely I will end up with some that have eyes on them. And I will plant them and we will have more russet potatoes even though we don't eat those a lot. So this cost me nothing because we would have been buying this anyway. Now that it has, they call it chitting. They call this chitting. Um, I'm not going to keep saying that word, but anyway, once they start to get these little eyes on them, you can plant them and who knows, maybe we won't have to ever buy a potato again. So all these things are things that I'm saying to say, it does not take a lot of money to start a garden or to continue gardening or to grow food for your family. So if you want to give it a try, you know, always start with something, always do things that you love to eat, that your family loves to eat. Otherwise it's going to be a chore. If you love kale, grow kale. If you love um, greens, any type of greens, grow greens. If you love, whatever you love, try growing it. And if it fails the first year, try again. Um, eventually you will find what works and what doesn't work and you don't have to spend a lot of money doing it. And that's the whole point of this particular video. So I hope you got something out of this. Um, if so, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And as always, share with your friends. You guys, I really appreciate you watching again. Until next time, from the garden. Bye.